Hey guys, welcome to this uh, new tutorial um, where we're going to be starting to extend our stat system and create a editor interface in Unity to actually modify it through the editor and instead of through scripting alone. So in this uh, episode, we're actually going to be jumping into um, adding some utility scripts that we'll use through other systems and that will help us actually create better uh, editors. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to be creating a new script and call it utilities. And in here, I'm going to create another folder and call this databases. So in here, we're going to be creating one new script and I'm going to call this abstract database. Since this will be the base class for uh, any databases we create. So we can get rid of the starting update and we'll also be changing it from a mono behavior to a scriptable object. So the reason we're doing this is our, these aren't actually going to be like databases connected to like SQL or or any other of those remote databases. We're going to be using a scriptable object just to store values of classes in a uh, asset file that Maya will create. And pretty much scriptable objects, if you don't know exactly what they are, they're pretty much used to store data and uh, kind of like a mono behavior, which you can... Uh, make prefabs of and have the mono behaviors attached. These you don't actually have to attach to a game object. You can just create instances of the data and use it in your game pretty easily. So let's uh, kind of get started adding some of our uh, what we'll need in here. So also um, through this video we'll be doing uh, some sterilizing, um, well using the attributes to help Unity determine which uh, values are actually sterilized by Unity. Um, I'm probably not going to go all the way in depth with that because it's a huge topic. Um, I'll try leaving one or two links in the uh, description or on the page this uh, video was posted so you guys can go uh, read up on them a little bit. But anyway, let's uh, start off. First off, I'm going to create a private list of objects. Later on, we're going to be changing this from objects to a different name, a different type. But for now, we'll just leave it objects, and we'll call the list objects. We'll also have to be using the system collection generic namespace, so the list or the generic list is actually populated correctly. And for now, um, we're going to add the attribute sterilized field, so Unity knows to take any objects in this list and save them. If we didn't have this tag, Unity would just discard any values in here and just not save them because they only save public variables. So next up we're going to add a protected list of objects and this is just going to be objects again but with a capital this time. And in here we're going to be creating a getter for our private objects list. The thing with this is we're going to be checking if the objects list is null. And if it is, we're going to actually be assigning it to a new list. This way, we don't have to um, rely on a constructor uh, since uh, scriptable objects they automatically call um, the constructor, or Unity automatically calls the scriptable objects constructor. And they want you to use, I believe, the on enable to initialize any data so the sterilization doesn't uh, get corrupted or weird things happen. But through this way, um, if Unity st sterilizes the data back into here, uh, this will not be null. There will be actually be something in there. Otherwise, uh, we'll just initialize it. So. It's kind of just a clean way to make this all work pretty easily. And since it's a list, we 
never have to actually assign a value to it unless it's null. So a getter alone works great. So we'll just go through and add the usual list methods. So I'm going to be doing a um, property here for count since the list uses a property for count as well. And finally, a object get at index. Kind of using a longer name here because later you'll kind of see that I'm using just to make it easier on some uh, for our code to make it easier. Um, I'm going to be using a different name. I'll use get at in a different section, get at index for this actual one. But it's kind of confusing now, but you'll see exactly what it is later when I actually implement it. So let's just step through here and uh, change all the code to work the list with the private list property. I'm just going to copy objects so it goes easier. Oops. And if there's any other methods you want to add, feel free. I'm just implementing the basics that you may want to use. Oh yeah, there's no replace. Oh, let's forget. Eagles objects. Okay, so this is the start. This is just kind of fleshing out all our information for this uh, database. So the next uh, step is to make this so it works with any types other than just object, or so we don't have to typecast it at least every time. So we're gonna be making this database uh, a generic type. So to do that, we're just gonna be adding the bracket or the we're just going to be adding the t-type to uh, the database. And we're going to go through here and just change any instance of this object to t. That's the simplest method for now. So now that we have all these values changed to t, um, that will work a little bit better or that'll make it pretty much generic and it'll return whatever type is T. So the list will automatically populate that and we'll be adding move that. The one thing down here is the get and index one. I'm gonna do some uh, just checking to make sure that everything's correct and do one more step down here. So in here, I'm gonna make sure that if the index I want to make sure the index is correct, so we actually have a value for the index that is being checked. And if it is, we'll return that value. But if there isn't anything at that index or the index is uh, wrong, I'm going to be returning a new instance of t. But since we don't actually know if this is a struct or a class or just an int or something. We can't really just use the new t like that. We'll actually want to find the default value for t, which a simple default t is always need. That'll return the default value t, whether it be zero or null or something along those lines. Cool. Now that our uh, database is more generic, um, now, we want to restrict what t is so we can actually add more um, functionality to our database. To do that, let's jump back into Unity. And inside our databases folder, 
I'm going to create a new folder, call it interfaces. And in here, I'm going to create a new interface called iDatabase Asset. Open this up. And we'll remove all the methods and remove the inheriting from my behavior and change it into an interface, the usual. Now, in this interface, all assets in my database, I want to have two things minimum. I want one it to have an ID. And two, I want each asset in my interface to have a name. This way we can kind of just know what we want. In all honesty, if you want to follow along with my implementation of the database, all you really need is an ID. But for printing out things, I kind of want to name the as well, just so I know what all objects are. And every object that I've made in a database so far, I've always had to add a name somewhere. So just having it on the base asset, that's all you need. And if you think of anything else you want for every asset in every database you'll ever make from this method, just add it to this interface and they'll have to implement it. So back in the abstract database, to make sure that everything or all T's have to implement that interface. Right over here after the script logic, we can just type in where t implements i database asset. So now any t's that come through here have to have this. So we can jump down and implement a few different methods that actually take use of that interface. Let's start off with the first one. This one's going to be return t, and I'm, this is just going to be get by id. Get id. So that's pretty nice. All we need to do for this is just do a for loop and loop through every asset in the database and grab the asset using the get at index. And we will do, actually, that will actually, if we do the get at index, it will always, eh, we'll just continue with this. Or actually, let's see, yeah, that'll work. I was just thinking that every time we loop through this, it'll do this if check, this if check, and we don't really need that since we already know we're going through them, and that's going to be correct. It's just a little optimization, but eh, we don't need to optimize as we're coding. We'll just make it work and then come back and optimize so we don't get obsessed with making everything work perfectly the first time. Turn, and I'm going to get at index, let's see, I don't need type caps, index i. Or actually, why am I doing that? It's just asset. Duh. Okay. There, that'll just return the asset if it has the same ID as the one supplied to the method. And after this for loop, if we don't actually return before this, we'll just return the default value again for t. So, I believe in a previous video, they were I did a item and item database tutorial, which took a different route than this one. And some people wanted the IDs to auto increment or auto populate. And for this, I found a, an easy way to do this is to create a method in here just to check. So we're going to be creating two different methods, both with a similar functionality, but have a tad bit different results. So first one we're going to do is method that returns an int. And we'll just call this get first available ID. So we'll do a first check to check if the count is less than zero. We'll just return the first available ID which is one if nothing's in there. Else we're going to be looping through all the indexes and finding the lowest one that is lowest index that is available to use. So 
we're going to create an int and call this target ID. Set this to 1, since that's the first one we want. And also we're going to be bool found usable ID equals false. These are our two values that we're going to use while going through. So this is the first one. We're going to do while not found usable ID. We're going to keep looking until we find something. In here, we're going to use found usable ID to true, just to start off. And then we're going to loop through all of our assets in the database and check their IDs compared to our target. So if get at index i id equals target dot or target id uh, found usable id equals false and we can break out of this loop. And also we want to take our target id and increase it by one. So we're going to loop through until our we find one that is usable. And once it is, we'll be breaking out of this while loop, and then we'll return our target ID. So this will return just our first ID in the database. This will take a little bit longer to actually find, depending on how many assets it is, since it has to loop through every single one every time. Um, next one will be a lot faster and a bit simpler. This one will be get next ID. This will probably be our go-to one unless we want to fill up every ID in the database. But it's just going to be a for loop that goes through all the objects in the database. And we're going to do int oops let's do this. I need one variable outside. Max ID equals zero. And we're going to do the get at index i dot id is greater than max. Actually, let's just do var asset equals get at index i and do if asset dot id equal or is greater than equal to actually just greater than max id. We'll do max ID equals asset dot ID. So we'll just go through and find the highest or the max ID in the database. And then we'll just return the max ID plus one to get the next one. So that one's a lot faster than the first one. And then finally, we'll have one more cleanup method. This will be public bool contains duplicate IDs. All this one's going to do is we're going to loop through and check if any IDs are the same in the database. If they are, it'll return true. This will pretty much just be for debugging and uh, editor scripts if we need them. So we'll just go i equals zero, i is less than count. Plus. And in this one, we're actually just going to go to count minus one because we don't want to check the very last uh, object. Because in the next loop, we're going to be doing j equals i plus 1. So every asset after i, we're going to be checking. And then we're going to do j is less than count and j plus plus. So j is going to go up to the very last object in our database, and i is going to go to the one right before, because we have to check i and the one after it for each one. So that's going to be the easy way. So inside our i loop, by outside our j, we're going to do asset one equals get at index i. And inside j, we're going to do asset two get at index j. And if asset one dot id equals asset two dot id, we're going to return true. And then outside both for loops, we're going to return false if we don't find any matchings. Cool. That adds a lot of our extra information here. 
Now, I'm going to be cutting this video off here since it's getting close to 20 minutes now. And I'm going to be, um, in the next video, we're going to finish this up, add a few more, um, some more functionality to it, and also extend it in two different databases that we'll use for all of our editors in the stat system and other systems later. So, thanks for following along. Hope this was kind of interesting to you, and I'll see you in the next video.